What is going on? Welcome back to a another live stream. If, if you're new here, we do this every Tuesday at noon 30 Eastern time. We are talking about how to sell your items for more than your competitors in, uh, in today's video, how to get um, above market value, if you will. Um, first off, I want to say what's up to Marilyn Wilson, first commenter. Thanks for popping in from Arkansas. Um, today, like I said, today I wanted to go over how I can uh, semi-consistently get above market value for my items. And there's a lot that goes into it because like technically I'm not really getting above market value. I just think that 99% of people selling on eBay and Poshmark and other selling platforms are just selling under market value. And in today's video, hopefully we are going to identify that. What's up, Michelle? Thanks for popping in. As you guys can see, we're in a we're in a new space here. This is the first live stream. Well, the second live stream from the new apartment. First one from the uh, from the office where we're probably going to be located. In every single live stream moving forward. So what's up? Thanks, Eric, for popping in. Hello from Southeast Missouri. We already got nine, 19 people in here. Let me let me know where you're checking in from. Let me know in the chat. Um, if you haven't already, hit the like button. Easy, easy way to support the uh, the video, the channel. What's up, Crystal? Thanks for popping in. Hello from Texas. Wanting to get better at reselling. I want to get better at reselling too. We all want to get better at reselling. Thanks for being here. Hopefully, hopefully by the end of the video, we'll we'll we'll, we'll make it at least one percent, one percent better. What's up, Natalie? Thanks for popping in. Sandy from Minnesota. We got back-to-back -back Minnesotas in the house. What's up, Mindy Lou? Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Um, just got to get this out of the way. Can someone confirm that the audio and the v the uh, visuals are on point? Because you know that uh, I am the worst with uh, technical difficulties. We got Kara checking in from Iowa. Gretchen from T-Town. Michelle's in Ohio. So, um, one thing I, want, I do want to get out of the way. Colorado. Sandy says we're looking good. Love it. One thing I want to get out of the way. I started a new YouTube channel, guys. Um, it is going to be super boring for half of you, but for about 5% uh, of you, it's going to be exactly what you need to stay on top of your productivity, on top of your listings, on top of just getting your work done. The channel, I linked it at the very top of the description. It is Listening with Dalton, not too far off from the name of the... Um, the main channel, but it is literally, uh, it's it's literally what it sounds like. You're just listing with Dalton. There's uh there's not much going on. You have a little something something on your face though. Uh oh, do I have something on my face? Uh oh. Um, but in the other channel, I am taking the uh, live stream listings that I'll be doing on Twitch at Dealing with Dalton taking the recordings and then posting that on YouTube so you guys can uh, toss on a two hour video of me listing and we can just like kind of co-work together. Uh, I know it can be kind of easy to get distracted when you are working by yourself, but uh, the, the psychological impact of having somebody else even on a screen, even not live, uh, is, uh, is a great motivator to keep getting your work done. So if you wanna go subscribe to that, if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit the link in the description. And go, uh, go subscribe. Help me get to, uh, get my first 1,000 subscribers on the new channel so I can get monetized. That would be awesome. Uh, Jennifer's checking in from Florida, Panama City Beach, PCB. <laughs> uh, Gretchen, you do have a little. Oh, I already read that one. Finally coming, catching it live. Travis, thank you so much for being here. Headed to the honey hole. I uh, hope you can catch the whole live while you're at the honey hole. That would be nice. Uh, Flipping Juniors in Austin, Texas. Gretchen, okay. Messing with me about my scruff. I had a feeling that's where you were going with that, but I was not, was not quite sure. All right, so back to the let's let's rewind back to the topic of today's video. How to sell for more than your competitors? How to sell your items for above market value? Not really above. If you uh, if you caught the first intro. We're really trying to sell for market value, whereas 95% of people are selling for below market value. And uh, this, this really is easily identified in uh, niches such as clothing and shoes, which is why I love selling shoes. I hate selling clothing, but clothing has the same, the same opportunity in it, if you will, because it's kind of hard to place a value on a pre-owned pair of clothes, right? Because like if you if you look up comps on pretty much any pre-owned pair of shoes, 
you're going to have somebody that sold it for $5 plus shipping. And then you got somebody that sold it for $60 plus shipping and then just a bunch in the middle. And how do you know if the person that sold it for 60 plus shipping actually got the top of the market and, or did they just get lucky? Did they just list high and someone came in and didn't do much shopping? Like what happened? I really hope you guys can't hear um, this motorcycle that is being obnoxious outside my window right now, but um, it's kind of hard to tell, right? But, but if you, if you, this is just another sales pitch to uh, sell them in one niche. I know that uh, a lot of you guys don't exactly love it, but if you could at least become an expert in one category, not saying you got to cut out all the other categories, become, if you become an expert in one single category, it's pretty easy to um, identify when people are selling at, above, or below market value. Gretchen Carly is in the other room. She just she just got back from Walmart, I'm pretty sure. She went on a whole trip by herself. That's, you know, that's actually a first for her. Um, making some Etsy orders is what she is doing. There she is in the comments. Um, but a lot of people, I get a lot of DMs about this, right? People will go to my, or see on my like Instagram story that I posted a sale, or they will go to my eBay store and see some of the things I'm selling and ask, or, or, or just simply state, I can't get the prices that you get. And I just, I, th I think you can. And because I'm not doing anything special, I'm not doing anything uh, that you can't do. I'm just pricing appropriately. And I think a lot of people don't price appropriately because they will go into the, the sold listings on eBay, say they're looking up just a generic pair of shoes, like some, uh, just like a generic pair of Asics, right? Asics, my mic is the left ears. Man, I keep forgetting to change that. Let me see if I can fix that. I, it's just like on OBS, it like automatically defaults to, uh, um, not mono, but whatever it is. Um, let's see if I click mono, maybe that'll, maybe that'll fix it. Close. Uh, let me know if that fixed it. Anyway, say they're picking up, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, just a generic pair of Asics, which Asics is a brand that a lot of people will sell under market and the comps will kind of be all over the place. Um, so they'll go in there and they'll see, okay, this person, like a lot of the people are selling them for about $25 plus shipping. And I'm still listing that pair at 39 plus shipping. Fixed it. We fixed it. Let's go. Let's go. I'm a technological genius in the house. Um, anyway, they're going to list those shoes at like $29 plus shipping. And then eventually, you know, sometimes if you're listing at the higher end of the market, if it's a saturated market, we've talked about that in previous videos. Like sometimes if there's a ton of a single item listed, it's kind of harder to do this, right? Because there's a lot of people undercutting you. But I still think that if the majority of the comps are in like the 20 to $29 range, depending on the shoe, but a lot of times you can still list at the $39 mark, the $35 mark, and eventually you're going to get that sale or you're at least setting yourself up for success in the turn in, in the sense of a lot of people are looking for negotiations on eBay and on Poshmark. And if you're listing at the, at about $10 above what most of the stuff is selling for, that isn't, that's not what I would say above market value because we've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this for a while. I've sold plenty of ASICs in the past for that price point. I know you can get that price point, but you're still setting yourself up for some negotiation. So if like maybe that individual pair is only going to sell for 25 to $29 plus shipping, if you're, and then you go ahead and list it at the $39 mark, you got a lot of room to, to negotiate there. And then there is that off chance that someone is going to swoop in and buy it for full price. Now, there are some things you can't just like jump in and list it $10 above everybody else. There's some things that kind of go into putting that listing together to give yourself the chance to actually sell it for that price. So that's what, that's what I wanted to talk about today. That's what I want to talk about today. MZJ, thanks for being here. The thrift horse, fat pandar here as always. Thank you so much. Uh, Mike Keen, Cole McGinnis. All right, I just gotta just gotta catch my breath after that one. I got I got a little worked up. I haven't got worked up like that in a while. Now, when we're putting these listings together, that we want to list, you know, at the top end of the market, there's a lot that goes into it. You, if you look at the sold comps of all these people that are selling in the twenty to twenty nine dollar range on our hypothetical pair that we're talking about for this video, a lot of them have terrible terrible listings. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys can attest to this. You go into the sold sold listings and I don't think that our first instinct is to look at what the listing looks like. 
our first instinct is to look at what it's sold for. And while that, that makes sense, that that is one thing that you do need to look at, you also really need to look at the actual listing. Because if you look at the actual listing, you can see, okay, well, this person took a terrible cover photo. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. It's the top of the shoes. I'm looking at the laces. Um, it's, it's an easy listing to scroll right past. And if you click on the listing and you go into it, you can tell that, you know, this shoe has probably been worn quite a bit. There's, there's a decent amount of damage on the, excuse me, on the bottom of the shoes. There's, there's, there's this or that that's going on. And it's also not just about the cover photo. It's not just about the wear and tear. Um, the wear and tear is a huge one. You know, I tell you guys, try not to pick up stuff that's too damaged. Try not to pick up stuff that needs a lot of cleaning. If you're following those guidelines, you're not picking up stuff that is in rough condition. You are already setting yourself up to pricing at the top of the market. But as I said, it's not just about the pictures. It's not just about the condition. When I first started, you know, reselling, the go-to on um, when it can, when it comes to listing is to go find the item in search and then hit that sell similar button. And if you hit that sell similar button on, I'm, I'm serious, 99% of the listings on eBay, everybody sucks at putting listings together on eBay. You hit that sell similar and then you go in there and the, the required item specifics are filled out. Some of them are probably wrong. And then every single other item specific is just left blank because they're not required. But as you guys know, we've talked about this before in the, the live stream, I think I called, uh, you're not entitled to sales or something like that, why you're not making any sales. eBay is huge on their algorithm. eBay is a very algorithm heavy platform. They, they just love their algorithm and people here on YouTube just love to pick apart the algorithm and tell you guys how to take advantage of that algorithm and how to place your, place your listings higher in search and we can see that a lot of people just don't practice that when we hit that sell similar button because a lot of it is left blank. If you take the few times, the, 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 few, the few times, the few times, if you take a few seconds, a few, a few minutes, maybe your first go around, you're, you're still familiarizing yourself. Uh, this is another reason why like becoming an expert in a single category is going to benefit you greatly is because you know what all those item specifics are and you know exactly how to fill them out properly. And so if you take a few minutes to fill out those item specifics, you're already setting yourself up for success above every single other person that's on that search because you're gonna rank higher. It's as simple as that. eBay likes the fact that you're filling out the, the EU size, you're filling out the UK size, you're filling out all these things that somebody out there is searching for like eBay wouldn't make it an option. eBay, I don't think that eBay's lying when they put right next to the item specific that there's 1,743 searches per month or per whenever on that item specific. So filling that stuff out is just setting yourself up for a little bit more success. So just take a few minutes, fill out those item specifics, and then... And then instead of selling similar, this is another thing we've talked about plenty of times over here on the channel, is to stop selling similar off other people's listings. Once you have built a, a repertoire, is that the right word? If you've built a catalog maybe, a, um, a, I don't know, a catalog. Let's go with catalog. A catalog of good quality listings on your eBay store, you can just find one that's similar. It doesn't have to be the exact same pair of shoes. That's similar to the ones that you're listing. And then most of the item specifics are already filled out for you. You gotta make a few changes here and there. Maybe it's a different size, maybe it's a different brand, but most of the item specifics are fairly filled out. If, you're, if you've already listed a pair of running shoes, a lot of the item specifics are gonna be the same across basically all running shoes. So even if you gotta change the size, you gotta change the title, you gotta change the brand, most of the other item specifics are pretty spot on. So once you're selling similar off your own listings, that process gets a little faster, but you can't do that in the beginning. Right, you still gotta sell similar off other people's listings. You gotta, you gotta build up your, your listing catalog, right? Fill out those item specifics and that is, that is one of the key ways that we're gonna talk about in today's video that you are going to be able to demand that higher price. You're gonna sell for higher than the market value for all these people that are undervaluing their items. Let's get back to the chat. I, I'm getting, I can, I can feel a little bit of windedness going on. So let's, let's, go, let's go check out the chat, see what everybody's up to. JL Crew 5 got new shoe racks. These were like $10 more expensive, but I think the price was worth it. 
high quality. I bought two more. Yeah, I think I, I just put two brand new ones together in the garage. I can't wait to show you guys the garage. I got a video um, where I kind of recorded a, a vlog, I guess, of the uh, process of moving my inventory from the old place to the new place. And hopefully that's gonna come out today or tomorrow. I just imported all the footage onto my computer right before we went live. So that's probably gonna come out, depending on what I got going on today, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but the shoe racks are amazing. The ones I recommended to uh, JL crew in the last video. If you guys, uh, I think they're down in the, the Amazon store link. Anyway, they're great. Reseller runner, hey, hey, let's go. Thanks for being here. Gretchen, have you ever figured out what your selling percent are of buyers who pay full price versus negotiated prices? Yeah, I don't know the exact. I haven't calculated it by any means, but um, I'm pretty sure that you can figure this out in your eBay seller hub. You can definitely figure this out on your Poshmark um, seller tools. But I want to say that at least 80 85% of my sales are from negotiations, whether that is me sending offers or um, buyers uh, sending me offers. Very, very rarely, like 10% of the time. Maybe maybe 15% of the time. Maybe 20% of the time. I don't know, but definitely not more than 20. Am I selling things for full price? Mostly it's off in negotiation. And to reel that into the topic of today's video, we're still getting, we're still getting above market value on... Um, uh, I, like I said, it's not above market value. We're selling at the top of the market, but in comparison to a lot of the other crappy listings that are out there, we're selling for more than those guys are. The pick and preacher is on dealing with Dalton Live. No way. That's crazy. What's up? Thanks for being here. Uh, the pick and preacher, that's what I discovered with video games. Love it. I'm assuming we're talking about item specifics because I know for a fact that, that is one, of, that's a category that people don't fill out any item specifics. And if there's like, if you got like Wii Sports, right? The number like the number three best selling game of all time. There's probably a crap ton of those listed on eBay, but they still sell quick. They still sell quick, but there's a crap ton listed. I bet an easy way to stand out. I don't really know what I'm talking about with video games. I'm just like hypothesizing here. Uh, I bet an easy way to stand out in, in a flooded game like Wii Sports is to fill out your item specifics. Uh, but um bum bum fat pandar. I pick up shoes that have stained scuffs and they sell faster than my clean shoes. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they're like uh maybe maybe they're like those uh like Air Force Ones or some vans or something that uh the kids like just like them being dirty these days. I don't get it. Um don't don't do sell similar. Oh wow, can you give detail on that? Okay, I'll off of your own, my man. <laughs> yes. Um, see if you're selling in all sorts of different categories, it's a little harder to do that since you sell a bunch of different stuff. Uh, but that's just one of the main benefits of niching down selling in one single category. You know, you got all your own listings that you know are perfect and you can just sell someone off those guys. The junk monkey is in the house. What is going on? Thanks for, thanks for being here. <coughs> oh man. I just, uh, breathed in and a little piece of saliva went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> I just, I just overshare here on, uh, dealing with Dalton live streams. All right, so we talked about item specifics. I briefly touched on the cover photos and the photos <clears throat> of your items. And that's what I wanna go into more detail with now. Once we get the item specifics out of the way, you're already gonna be ranking higher in search. So your, your listing is going to be one of the first ones that pop up when someone searches for that item. So even if someone's listed has the same pairs of shoes listed for 25 that you have listed for 39. If they're on the second or third page, no one's ever going to find them. No one ever goes past. Um, most people don't even go past the fold. They just, they don't even scroll. It's just the first few items that pop up. They're going to make a decision there. Um, but if you're on the second, third page, it's just like, it's just basic SEO here, guys. Like I, everybody in the chat knows that if you Google search something, you're not going to who here. I want, I want some, I want some emojis in the chat. Drop any emoji you'd like. If you have ever clicked page two of Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever you use, I just, I don't think anybody does it right. Let me know in the chat. Drop an emoji, drop a drop a, a hand emoji, raise your hand. If you've ever clicked page two of Google, Bing or Yahoo, I'm gonna assume that most of you guys haven't, you guys don't. And well, James, James Steiner has, James Steiner has, the pick and preacher has. All right, guys, you're just, you're just making me look bad here. You're not helping me prove my point. The reseller runner, there we go. We got a nope from the reseller runner. Majority of people are not going to page two. Fat Pandar is, is proving me wrong. <laughs> 
The Pick and Preacher does it too often. Jennifer does it. But I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, statistics show. Google's back end, they will openly tell you that most people don't go to page two. And the same thing happens on eBay. People don't go to page two. So by inserting those perfect, <laughs> you guys are just ruining my analogy here. I'm going to kick all you. I'm just kidding. I'm not kicking any of, you guys, any of you guys out. But nobody are doing it on eBay. as Just like on Google, nobody is going to page two. Some people are. Most people aren't. But by ranking on the first page, getting those item specifics in there, looking good, you're up at the top. Now what? Now how are you getting people to not only see that listing, but click on that listing and go into it? And that is where the pictures, the pictures come in handy. All right, the chat's going crazy. I asked a question and got a bunch of, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any questions here. Uh, -dum -bum -bum. Kiwi Bird Wilson. So glad you made it. Thanks for being here. Um, -dum -bum -bum. <laughs> Fat Panda, our second and third page is where the deals are. I agree with that. I agree with that. That is where the deals are. Uh, but a lot of people just don't know. They're just, they're just sleeping on the deals. Uh, see, yeah, Gretchen just, Gretchen helped me out here. You guys didn't necessarily uh, negate my point. You guys are just resellers and you know how to look for the best deals. Um, people will not scroll past the first page mostly. When you pack shoes in the USP, you drop them in and let them rattle around, or do you put any stuffing bubble wrapper? Do you ever put them in a bag? Uh, Nick Picker, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I just put some packing paper in there, make sure they're not too bouncing around. But back to our, pic back to our pictures, back to our topic here. How do you get someone, now that you're ranked on the first page, you're ranked high up, how do you get someone to click on that? That is by taking good, well-lit pictures. Lighting. As you guys know, we've talked about this many times. Lighting is the most important thing in the world. I don't care where you take your pictures. I don't care what your backdrop is. I don't care what camera you're using. I don't care if you have a if you have a smartphone, you got a good enough camera. All you need is good lighting. And if you don't have a, a light box or um, this or that, you don't have an actual light. Just wait until it's broad daylight. Go outside, find something, find a place where you can put the shoes that doesn't have anything distracting going around it. You know, you, you maybe you got a fence in your backyard, you can sit it up on a, on a you know, overturn a wheelbarrow, put it on the top, I don't know where I'm going with this, but just find somewhere outside and take the pictures in broad daylight. And the first cover photo, now this one's kinda, like this one's, this one's kinda controversial. I don't think it should be, but a lot of people take different cover photos and I just, I don't understand it. If you go to footlocker.com, if you go to nike.com, if you go to adidas.com, if you go to any shoe website on the planet, they're all taking pictures the exact same way because the most important angle is the side view, the side of the shoe. I got, I got some kids shoes right next to me. Shout out my baby J collection. This right here, this is what one, people want to see. People don't want to see this. People don't want to don't want to see this. How people? I know some people will like. I I don't know, like stack the shoes on top of each other, do some weird stuff. I don't know. Just people want to see the side of the shoe, what the side of the shoe looks like. This is the cover photo on every website, any any shoe store. That is their cover photo. Show people what they are buying. They want to see the details on the side of the shoe. That's the most important. That's where, when, when the shoes are being designed, that's where most of the designs are going. That's where the Nike swoosh is. That's where the three stripes are for Adidas. Show that, put that side, that from the side angle as the cover photo so people can see what they're doing. Well lit. And then from there, if you can do that, take well lit photos of the side, uh, show people exactly what it is they're searching for. Then you got their click, you get their click. Then we need to go and make sure that we have every detail of the shoe. Most people, even if you put, please send me, if you need, like if you have in your description, if you need more photos, please shoot me a message. No one's gonna shoot you a message. Just make sure you have all the photos that are necessary before the listing is published. All angles, every, if there's flaws, make sure they're, they're, uh, they have their own picture. Like every single angle of the shoe needs to be photographed because I'm, I promise you guys, if you forget to, to photograph the, the bottom of the shoes, people are buying pre-owned shoes here. One of the most important pictures is the tread, the bottom of the shoes. And if you omit that from your photos, because I, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody out there who thinks, well, well, the bottom doesn't really matter. People don't see the bottom. It does matter because that shows how much wear has gone into those shoes, how much more life is going to be brought out of those shoes. So if you forget to take a picture of the bottom of the shoes or you just omit that completely from your uh, your photo setup or maybe the top, a lot of people like to see the insoles. I try to, uh, I don't go too, I don't like, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't uh, make this too much of a point because it, it's like 2% of people that care about this, but 
when I take a picture of the top of the shoes, I'm trying to get it directly underneath some light. So the, the light shines in on the insole so people can see the insole, see if there's still a logo on that insole so they can know how much wear is in there. But that's a little off topic, back to the bottom. If you omit that picture, most people aren't going to message you and ask you, hey, can you upload a picture of the bottom of the shoes? Most people are just gonna move on to the next listing. And if they move on to the next listing, you've already lost their sale. You're first off, you're excuse me, you're priced higher than your competitors and you're not putting together a premium listing that justifies that price. So they might as well move on to another person. Excuse me, let me get another a little uh, drink here. Back to the chat, Junk Monkey, resellers are researchers. Unless we find the perfect answer on page one, we will keep going. Because people on the second, third page don't get a lot of action. So when you make offer, they are more likely to accept and someone on the first page getting offers all the time. What is the difference between promoting at a higher percentage as opposed to listing all item specifics? Does it pay to promote higher than 5%? That's actually what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna be uh, touching on some, uh, some promoted listings here in just a minute. Um, is there a right way for what the shoe is facing in the cover photo, right or left? Right or left doesn't matter. Um, I know, I think, I think Nike, like when I photograph them, the toe box is on the right. I think Nike or Adidas, one of the two, on their website, it's pointing left. And they're like the one person that does it that way. And I don't, I don't think it matters. Oops. Do not think it matters. Um, my desk is acting a fool. I get asked for more pictures all the time and I copy Dalton style picture taking. Those people never buy, never buy. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's honestly odd. <laughs> I don't ever get asked for more pictures. Um, I mean, I do, but it's like one, 2% of people ask for more pictures and I just refer them straight back to the pictures. I would just have you had a chance to look at all the pictures. I think every angle is shown and usually they shut up. Uh, they definitely don't ever buy though. Definitely don't ever buy. Um, as reseller runner asked, he asked a question about um, um, promoted listings. So let's, let's, let's get into that for a second. Let's get into that. We've put together a good listing. We've got good item specifics. We're gonna rank organically. We've got good pictures, a good cover photo that is going to entice people to click on it. It's ranked high in search. It looks good. People know what they're shopping for. They're gonna see that, that well lit, good displayed, good displayed cover photo. They're gonna click on it. And that's possibly gonna lead to some more sales. But another way, if you can't get up there organically, cause sometimes there's a lot of competition. As I mentioned before, sometimes with the, uh, uh, the Wii Sports analogy, right? There's probably a ton listed. Um, putting in those item specifics is gonna get you up there organically, but maybe you need just a little bit a little bit more push because you can't quite get it up on the first page. You can't quite get it high enough in search. Another easy way, on eBay at least, to get your items in front of more people is by promoting your listing. That basically is just saying, hey, eBay, if you put me at the top of the search result, I'm gonna pay you this percent of the final value fee for putting me high in search. Um, I don't know, I, I haven't done a bunch of testing. I don't know the perfect percentage. It's gonna vary. eBay, eBay's nice. They have a lot of, uh, a lot of data. They have a lot of uh, research. They, they know their platform more than anybody else, right? So when you're going to put your listing together, you're gonna see that it has a recommended um, promotion value or promotion fee. And one, that's a pretty, easy indicator on whether or not that you should pick that item up in the future, right? Because if the recommended uh, promoted percentage is really high, say it's in like the 20s or the 30s, that means that there is a lot of competition on that. There's a lot listed and the odds are it doesn't sell very often because there's more and more listed every single day. And if you have, a, if it's recommending you promote at 20, 30%, that the odds are that you should, probably shouldn't pick that up in the future because you know it's probably not going to sell in the first place. But a lot of the times, if you're picking up some good stuff that's in high demand, um, it's it's going to tell you to promote between three and you know 15 percent. 15 is even really high. Like 15, you're pushing it. I don't ever promote at 15 percent. Don't don't let don't let that sound like I promote at 15 percent. Typically, I'm promoting between three to six percent. I don't think I've ever promoted higher than six percent. Um, but I bounce between the three and six, depending on how many sales I want to push out there. Five is a good sweet spot. I, like I said, I haven't done a lot of like intensive research on whether promoting it 6% or 7% 
does dramatically better than 5% or 4%. Uh, but, but I'm finding pretty good success balancing in the uh, three to five, maybe sometimes six range. Uh, 5% promoted listings is what I'm currently sitting at and it's, uh, it's doing good. Not all, of my, not all of my sales come from promoted listings, but it does add a nice bump on top of my organic sales. Um, so that's just an easy way, you know, if you're trying to get your item in front of more people's eyes, if you're trying to sell for above market value, like I mentioned, not actually above market value, but at market value because everyone else puts together crappy listings, if you're trying to get more money out of your item, promoted listings is one easy easy way to do that because you're going to be putting it in front of more people's eyes. If you go to your eBay um, seller hub, I'm going to pull this up right now so I can tell you exactly what it looks like. Um, under the traffic tab, you're going to have your listing impressions, your click through rate, your listing page views, and your sales conversion rate. If you're just going off numbers, eBay's telling you what your sales conversion rate and your click through rate is. So in order to get more sales, all you got to do is get in front of more eyes. You need more listing impressions. If getting in front of more people's eyes, if you're getting more impressions and your sales conversion rate goes down or your click through rate goes down, then you need to take a look at your, um, at your listings. If your click through rates going down, put together better listings more item specifics, better cover photo, well lit. That's where the photo, the click through rate is where having good photos comes in handy. If your sales conversion rate is going down, maybe you need to also, you know, take more better pictures, intense, not intensive, but more um, complete pictures showing every, every angle, make sure your item specifics are laid out. Maybe you are priced too high uh, because there is a limit. You know, we can't just price astronomically. If most of the sales are in the 20 to $25 range, we're not pricing something at $100 and expecting us to do some like magic back end SEO work and sell it somehow for $100. That's not how it works. But that 20 to $25 pair, 25, $30 pair, we can list at 39 and maybe get that full price, full sale price. Uh, motorcycle guy's back. Um, and he's gone. So getting your listings in front of more people's eyes should in turn lead to more sales. So that's where promoted listings is going to come in handy. The higher you, that you promote that sale just means that you're going, if you promote it 5%, that means when it sells, you're paying a 5% final value fee on top of your final value fees that eBay already has in place, but you're paying an additional 5% fee to eBay as a thank you for putting you at the top of search. Um, I definitely think it's worth it. I promote all of my listings. Um, not all need promoted. Don't get me wrong. Don't, not all of them need promoted. If you're selling something that there's zero listed and a hundred sold, like it's a, it's the best item on the planet. Um, you probably don't need to promote that. Uh, but I just, I just do. Cause a lot of times with shoes, those items don't pop up very often. Uh, most of my shoes do have quite a bit of competition. They're just your everyday average shoes. So we need to promote the listings. We need to put good item specifics together and then we need to get some good cover photos and we got to get people clicking and we got to get some sales rolling. Um, do you have a favorite day or time of the day to list? Um, I don't think it matters. I really don't just, uh, just be consistent as consistent as you can possibly be. I haven't been consistent over the past uh, probably two weeks because of the move and my sales have plummeted. It's as simple as that. If you, if you aren't consistent, eBay's not going to push your listings as much as they would if you are consistent. That's, that's a proven fact. That is a proven fact. Um, if it's one a day, great. If it's 28 a day, even better. Just as many as you can to stay consistent. I don't think the time of the day matters. Just be consistent. Mark Klein, old guy shoes in the house. Found a pair of Adidas skateboard, black with red stitching and flies all over them. Help me. <laughs> uh, Google Lens is your best friend. Um, if they're Adidas, they should have a style code. It should say art, I believe. If it doesn't say art, it's just like a, it's two uh, letters followed by four numbers. Just uh, search up that style code. Fat Pandora does 2.1% promoted. Junk Monkey dynamic varial ad rates are coming. I'm on the beta test list and refuse to use it. I think that that would be kind of scary because you know if it's dynamic, uh, it's basically going to go off of the suggested ad rate. And if it's some for some reason says that they suggest a 20% ad rate, then it's going to force. It's not going to force you. You have to opt into the dynamic ad rate, but you could unknowingly no, bump your ad rate up to 20%. So I, I wouldn't do that. I got 34,000 impressions on a Cleveland Indian shirt, 0% click through. Um, 
I, I, hmm. 34,000 impressions, 0% click through. Something's gotta be going on. Maybe the title isn't properly describing what it is. Maybe the pictures aren't clear. I don't know. Uh, just maybe take a look at it. Make sure that everything is spot on. Make sure your title is what you mean it to be. Make sure the photo is uh, is good. Maybe Maybe search for that shirt in eBay and see what pops up and see how people are photographing that shirt and what the titles for their listings are. Or go to the sold listings and see what the sold listings look like and maybe you can use those to improve on your own. Um, when cropping your picture for an item, do you think all the extra photos need to be cropped and brought to the front just as perfect as your main? I don't crop my main item picture. I take it in square mode on my phone and I go from there. Also, have you noticed the larger your list bank gets, the higher your sales go up, or is it just a placebo? Um, are you saying your like drafts, the, the larger your drafts get, or the more listings you have? Because if you have more listings, then yes, um, you definitely would be seeing more sales. Um, question, not sure if you answered, do you use Pro Raw on your phone for pictures? No, I do not. Uh, it's just gonna be huge file sizes. I don't think it is necessary. Junk Monkey, the Adidas style number is right after art on the label. Reseller Madness, I do 3% uh, promotion, but have dabbled with 10% as an experiment. No change in sales, but when I listed items with better demand sales sort. Inventory quality matters. Yes, at the end of the day, everything we're talking about today, inventory quality trumps every single thing that we're talking about. You need to get inventory quality down, and then we can start talking about everything we're talking about today. Inventory quality, and then you can start working on SEO and better photos and inventory quality, number one. Oh, interesting. Dynamic ad rate, you can put an upper limit cap. Love that. Uh, pick and preacher, yeah, drafts, sorry. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't, I might just be a placebo. I don't think I've ever noticed having a ton of drafts increases my sales. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button for our man. Thank you so much. I was just getting ready to say, what are we at here? What are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? We got 52 people watching and 25 likes like come on guys we can do better than that uh oh i got some uh, i got some sound coming through skip pause uh 52 people watching 28 people have hit the like button go ahead and hit that for me it's an easy free way to uh to help out the channel and if you missed the intro the very beginning of the video there's another channel that you can help out in the very top of the description i started a new channel called listing with dalton if you want to uh, have a coworker, just throw something on uh, while you're listing, that is the place to be. You can list with me, or if you just want to like sit there and watch me list for two hours and just see how I do my uh, do my thing, uh, there you go. You can go check that out, uh, linked in the description at Listing with Dalton. Uh, do you list using Cell Similar? Yes, as we mentioned earlier, maybe watch the replay. Uh, we talked about how using Cell Similar on your own listings is the best way to go. Thanks for being here, James. Uh, 1.9 million impressions, 0.3% click-through rate. I have a lot of lookers on the high-end stuff. Um, I mean, you're spot on. I have a 0.3% click rate as well on 6.7 million impressions. Uh, but -bum -bum, I hit it. Reseller runner. Thank you, Pick and Preacher. Thanks for hitting that like button for me. All right. Now let's talk about, let's get back. To, let's, let's reel it back in, reel it back into what we're talking about here. Uh, so what have we covered today? If you wanna sell for a higher price than your competitors, you wanna stand out above the crappy listings that are on eBay, most, like, like we're talking about today, comps don't mean everything. Just because the comps are reading $15 plus shipping or $25 plus shipping doesn't mean that that's actually what the item is worth. Uh, mainly this is you know going to apply to clothing and shoes, pre-owned clothing, uh, a lot of people underpriced. A lot of people don't know how to put a good listing together. So they're going to be priced at the bottom of the market or under the market. So we wanna learn how to pr put together a proper listing that's going to demand a higher price point. And in that, we've talked about putting together our item specifics. We've talked about good cover photos, good high quality photos in your listing showing every single angle under well-lit, most important thing, the lighting, well-lit photos. Uh, we talk about promoting your listings to get them at the top of search um, so you can rank in organic and in the promoted section. Now, once we've had interest, once we've got our listings out there in front of people's eyes, um, people are clicking on it. People are shopping. People are thinking about buying from you. 
And I don't want that to be the end of your, of your sales strategy. I don't want you to think that all of your sales are gonna come directly from someone searching something, clicking on your listing, and whether they send an offer or not, or if they click buy it now, excuse me. I don't want you to, I don't want your sales strategy to end there. I don't want you to, I don't want you to trust a buyer is going to make a decision once they go to your listing. This is where the, um, I don't know if retargeting is the, uh, is the right word here, but sending out offers is, is the first option. First and most easiest option is to be sending offers to interested buyers. When someone clicks on your listing and they show interest in that listing, that is when they are going to pop up again on your eBay seller hub under your tasks, you're going to see send offers to interested buyers, people that have clicked on your listing, people that have shown interest, people who have watched people who have liked are going to pop up there. And then easy, easy way. If they didn't initially, uh, you know, bite the bait, if they didn't pull the trigger on the purchase, that's an easy way to send them an offer to let them know that, Hey, um, I'm really interested in selling this item. You're really interested in this item. Uh, maybe we can make a deal today. And the beautiful thing about that, the beautiful thing about sending these offers out to interested buyers is that all your con competition just kind of disappears, right? You're no longer on a search page fighting for the person's click, fighting for the person to choose you. You're now sending your listing to them. They're, they have left the search. They have already shown interest in your listing. And now all the competition just kind of fizzles away. Um, if they're, if they're, if they're, um, if they're a shopper, if they're someone who's looking for the best deal, like a lot of us in the chat have, uh, have already alluded to that resellers have that in them. If, if they also have that in them, maybe they'll go search again and see if they can find a better deal, but maybe you send them that offer and they're like, okay, you know what? I was looking for these shoes. I'm going to take this offer and go ahead and buy it. They don't have the other options right there in plain sight. They don't have the other options right there to compare and make sure that they are getting the best price, right? If you're the first one of the many listings they look through, because a lot of people aren't taking advantage of this. I know for me, me one, I was not taking advantage of this early on in my reselling. I remember my send offers to interested buyers was up to like hundreds. Like I would never sell send offers. And once I started doing that daily, multiple times a day, that's when my sales started skyrocketing because nobody does that. People are going to go shopping. I do it all the time. I'll go on eBay. I'll be looking for something. I'll get distracted and then I'll just completely forget about it. And I'm never even going to buy the thing. But if someone, sometimes if someone sends me the offer, it just brings it back to my mind. I don't want to go search again and try to find the best price. I already searched. They sent me the offer. And if it's an enticing offer, maybe that's the one. Maybe I will go ahead and pull the trigger on that. That's an easy way to, again, get rid of the competition. The competition are already behind you because they didn't send out offers. The person has already stepped away from the search bar. They're no longer searching. You are sending them out an offer directly to their inbox. And hopefully that might lead to a, a sales ski, which is what we're here for, is what we are here for. Uh, Josh Avendano wants to know, when you finish taking pictures of your shoes, do you box them and get them ready to ship, put them in a shelf? or store them in a plastic bin, or what do you do? Um, I store them on a shelf. I think that uh, pre-boxing them would take up way too much space for the amount of inventory that I have. Uh, so I just put them on a shelf. Uh, my, I have an inventory video. You can search, uh, just search inventory on my YouTube channel, and you'll see exactly what my uh, inventory setup looks like. But I just use shelves, and I use SKUs. Uh, that's how that works. Kiwi Bird Wilson, I have, I have not been able to sell because I've spent uh, a, one and a half months in the hospital. When I reactivate my account, will they show my stuff like they did, especially some I have higher promoted listing. Uh, the easiest way, if you haven't been listing, if your sales have tanked, if you have not been listing and you're wanting your sales to get back up to a point that they used to be at, the easiest way is to just start listing consistently. If you start listing consistently, that's what is going to show eBay that you are an active seller because that's what eBay wants. eBay wants the best possible experience for a buyer. They want the buyer to be able to make a purchase and know that their item is going to get to them when it's promised. So if you are constantly listing on eBay, eBay's seeing that you are always on their site. So you're not going to miss a sale. 
a sale is going to come in and you're going to get it shipped out. You are a uh, you you are a business owner in eBay's eyes. You are constantly working on your eBay store. You are constantly listing. So eBay knows that you are going to provide a good customer experience. Given you have a bunch of good feedback and you haven't had any uh, marks on your account, but if you took some time off, like I have. Like I have, I will, I need to get back to listing consistently. Uh, we're still getting settled in. I know this, this room looks fairly clean, but every other room in my apartment is, uh, is covered in moving stuff. Uh, but you know, once that's all done, an easy way to get my store back to what it was two weeks ago is to just start listing consistently. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what that looks like. That can be one a day. Like I mentioned earlier, it can be two a day. It can be 10 a day, whatever it is, just make sure you are consistently listing. And that's the fastest way to get your store back on track. All right. Reseller Madness, congrats on the move. Yes, feels amazing. Feels amazing. I was tired of my old place. Terrible location. This place, so much better. I'm very happy to be moved. Um, where's your favorites, favorites spots to find products to list? Thrift stores, flea markets, uh, yeah, just the, just the, just the regular stuff. I don't do garage sales because it's kind of hard to consistently find shoes at garage sales, but mainly thrift stores. Um, anyway, other ways to, you know, stand out, right? Demand a higher price than your competitors is a good one. This is going to, this, we're kind of going backwards here. We talked about after the search and, uh, and sending offers to likers. This is a bunch of, like, like I said, this is stuff that we talk about all the time, but it's, it's nice to have a constant reminder of these things. Um, having a coupon is a great way to do that. I know that sounds counterintuitive because we're trying to sell for more. And if we give a coupon we're we're already discounting, but if you're, if you're taking that item that a bunch of the comps say in the twenties and you listed it 39 plus shipping and say you have a 10% coupon available, that's only going to discount it down to about 35 bucks and 35 is a lot better than 25, right? So we're still selling above market value and simply having that coupon available. Uh, first off, this is only available to people who have eBay stores. I think that uh, if, if you wanna take your eBay business seriously, I don't, I don't see any reason of waiting to upgrade to an eBay store. I think that these tools are a great way to get more sales. I know a lot of people say wait until um, you are listing enough monthly that you, um, take up all your free listings. But like, if you want to get coupons, if you want to get markdown sales, if you want to do all these things, if you want these tools available to you, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty simple upgrade. It's not a lot of money. Um, but having a coupon on your listing is just another easy way to make a buyer, make a, make an impulse buy. Um, not that, not to make that sound negative, like, because they are searching for it, they want it. Uh, but just having that coupon on there is an easy way. Oh, this person has a 10% off coupon that I can use. And just like, you know, psychologically thinking, they don't really do a lot of math. Um, it's an easy way to get them to pull the trigger, right? Um, running a markdown sale. Uh, I've never been the kind of guy that lists really high and then always has a markdown sale running to make my things look on sale. But like, that's an easy way. If you have some older listings, maybe you price something a little too high um, because you were shooting for the top of the market and it's been 90 days and no one's purchased it, um, maybe running a markdown sale is an easy way to do that. Maybe a 10% off markdown sale, it's gonna show the original price, it's gonna have a slash, it's gonna say 10% off, and it's gonna look like a sale. People like sales, just like they like coupons. It's gonna be just an easy way for someone to say, hey, this person, no, oh, excuse me, got the, got the hiccups. This person is really trying to sell this thing, they've got it on sale, they've got a coupon available. Uh, I'm gonna go with this guy, even though he's at a little bit higher price with all of these discounts he's offering. It's probably comparable to these other guys. His, his listing looks better. Uh, her, her, she's got better item specifics. All of the questions are being answered. Coupons, markdown sales, easy way to uh, get a few extra sales out of people who would otherwise skip on to the next listing. They want to take advantage of that stuff because it has that sense of, uh, uh, of urgency, right? Because the coupons have a expiration date. The markdown sale has an expiration date. They want it, They want to get it before they lose it. And then another great way, as we've talked about in depth before, is a newsletter. This is a great one for people that have purchased from you, people who follow you. Some people, like this is, this one's a little bit trickier because uh, the, someone's had to have either purchased something from you or you've had to give them a reason to follow your eBay store. But if, the, if, if they fall under those two categories, they've bought something from you or they follow you, 
sending them an email of a new coupon or a markdown sale, or maybe you just want to send them an email of um, some new inventory that you have. Maybe you've got some good stuff and you just want to get it out there. You just listed a ton of new items and you want to get it out to people who purchased from you before. You're taking your listings and you're removing them from search. You're removing your competitors, throwing your competitors to the side, and you're going directly to your buyer. And that's an easy way to demand a higher price point. Easy. If you can, if you can set your listing aside and have all your competitors out of your buyer's reach, out of your buyer's eyes, if you present a good listing that someone is interested in to them through a, um, through, through a newsletter, they're not, a lot of people aren't going to do much research. They're not going to look for a better price. If it's a good listing, it's something that they're interested in. They're likely going to pull the trigger because there's a lot that goes into it. I know we've touched on this. If in pre-owned shoes, there's a lot that goes into it. If you have something that's in really good condition, uh, that is going to matter more to the buyer than a lower price of something in worse condition. So guys, take advantage, take advantage of all of these tools that eBay is offering you. What are we at now? 62 people watching, 43 likes. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. If you're, if you're watching, you haven't hit the like button, do me a favor and hit it for me. Um, but bum 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 Fat Panda, I got my eBay store at 150 items. I think it was a long time ago. What was a long time ago? I am, I, am, I lost the, lost the train of thought. I don't know what was a long time ago. Kiwi Bird Wilson, how long do you keep a coupon or sale on your items? Um, it just kind of depends. The sales, if I'm doing a markdown sale, it usually is going to last a week. Coupons, I bounce in between doing for a week at a time, for a few days at a time. Uh, I've gone through, I think the best way to do it is to do a coupon daily. Um, if you, first thing in the morning, you know, you set up a coupon and you send it out because uh, you can just copy coupons doesn't take a lot of time. Um, setting up a coupon every single day, so that way when the buyer sees it, it shows that the coupon's gonna expire in less than 24 hours. Uh, that's gonna lead to more sales. Um, I, I, in the past, didn't really think like that, and I set up coupons that would just last for pff, months, and I just don't think that that is the uh, best way to go about it because it, it lacks the urgency that uh, having shorter coupons um, helps with, if that makes sense. So the shorter, the better with the coupons. Markdown sales, same same situation. And another mistake that I made that you could uh, that you could bypass is when you're putting together a newsletter. A lot of people have a coupon that is not a public coupon; it's a private coupon uh, that they only send out via a newsletter. And I would do the same thing, and I would have that coupon set to expire in like 2024, because. Who cares? It's in the newsletter. It's not public. It's private. I don't want to have to keep making this. But then after a while, I realized that in the in the email that I sent, it has the coupon code, and then right underneath the coupon code, it says expire. It has the expiration date. So if someone gets an email into their inbox that says, "Hey, here is a coupon code to use on my eBay store for twenty percent off," but it expires in twenty twenty four, like they don't have the urgency to click on it. But if it says, "Hey, this expires Monday," or "Hey, this expires tomorrow," uh, they're going to be—they're going to have a little bit more of a sense of urgency to go in and click on that list or click on that email, and maybe go see if there's something they want to use that coupon on. So the the shorter, the better, uh, in terms of getting into the psyche of a buyer. The pick and preacher. I like the newsletter idea. I am distracted with my draft bank. Can can you go over how you get that? from buyers on platforms? Like, do you just ask for their email for future inventory? No, you uh, you go into your seller hub and then you click on store. And then when you get in the store, you, there's a button for store newsletter. You click on the store newsletter and then you create a campaign and it's, it's fairly simple to set up. You can, uh, you can just check a box and it's gonna send it to all the buyers that have purchased from you in the past month or you can sh check a box that'll send it to all the buyers that have purchased from you in the past year. Or you can check a box and send to everybody who follows you. Um, but just so you guys know how effective the, the um, newsletters are, um, my summary from February 22nd of 2023 to May 23rd, 2023, I've had a 42% open rate 
on almost 4,000. Uh, the reach is almost 4,000. Uh, I can't share my screen right now, or I, or I would. Maybe we'll go over this next week. Um, but my total reach is almost 4,000 people have gotten email from me, and the open rates are 42%. That means 42% of 4,000 people, that's you know almost half, that's like just under 2,000 people have opened an email from me that has no, no competitors listed, only my listings with a coupon code that says, hey, you can use this. Um, the click-through rate is 4%. And I know that sounds, sounds low, that, sound, that sounds low, but in, in sales, in like uh, online sales funnels, 4% click-through rate is pretty dang strong. Like 4% of 4,000, I feel like that should be easy math that I should just be able to do off the top of my head, but um, I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, I did divide it by. Definitely not 100,000 people. That's 160 people. 160 people last month clicked on that email. That is the potential of 160 free sales. Free sales in the terms of those sales were not going to come because they were not actively searching for something on eBay. They weren't even on eBay. They were just in their email and they got an email from me and they clicked on that email and potentially bought something. Even if even if 1% of that, that's one that I definitely should be able to do off the top of my head. 1.6, an extra two sales a month, an extra four sales a month, like 1% of the 4% the click-through rate. That's an extra two sales a month. I'm just saying, they're just free sales guys. And that's low, because you've already got 4% of people that clicked on it. So the odds of it being 1% of the people that, yeah, guys. eBay, eBay just makes it so easy for you. Poshmark could never. Free sales guys, free sales. We're wrapping it up here. We got, we got three minutes and 30 seconds left on the stream. Um, what do we need to announce? What do we need to announce? Um, I've already talked to you guys a couple times about the new channel, Listing with Dalton. If you want to list with me live, if you want to actually work with me live, follow me on Twitch. Uh, soon, very soon, there will be a schedule on there. It's going to be a normal thing, just like we do this every Tuesday at 1230. Uh, we're going to have a Twitch stream every week at a certain time. I got to get that lined out. Like I said, we're still settling here. Uh, there's going to be a stream very soon uh, because I have a ton of listings I need to get done. And that will be uploaded to the, to the new channel, Listing with Dalton. Uh, just in, like, again, just an easy, no distraction, just something you can throw on and have a coworker there. Um, so go subscribe there. Um, I've posted my first video and I've recorded my second video. Um, the first video was a, a haul, a haul video. The second video was a 50 pair mystery box that I got in. Uh, I uploaded the first one, the second one is being uploaded today or tomorrow to the members only section for $4.99 a month. Uh, you can check those videos out. Just more of, it's just gonna be more behind the scenes and whoever gets in there, um, every video I ask what you guys wanna see. I wanna make that as valuable as possible uh, so we can form a little community there. Um, I'm working on put together a Discord, a free Discord for us to you know keep each other accountable, You know, pre post some wins. Uh, that should be coming by next week. We'll have a uh, we'll have a Discord server up where we can all just hang out. It's 100% free, and uh, you guys can have just like some conversations. Doesn't even necessarily have to be about shoes. Just just uh, learn from each other and have a place that we can chit chat. Um, if we have any questions to round it off, we still got two minutes left. Um, what's a good average click through rate? Higher. A good average click through rate is higher than last time. <laughs> um, what is your typical way of handling counter offers when you feel a customer's offer is a little too low? Just counter offer at your best price. Counter offer at whatever you're willing to accept, but always counter offer. Don't don't let don't let an, don't decline an offer. The more activity on a listing, the more it's going to look like a valuable listing in eBay's eyes. So if someone's sending offers on it, they're going to put it in front of other people's eyes. Pick and Preacher just sub, bro. Appreciate that. I don't know why I have not been on a live in so long. I always learn something. It's hard to keep up with everyone. I agree. It's so hard to keep up with everyone. Every, every single person's got a live sometime. Um, I can't keep up with them. That's why I do my own. <laughs> um, yeah, so any, any last minute questions before we round this one off? We got 50 seconds left, guys. 50 seconds. 50 seconds. After this, I've been telling you guys, in the loop, the new podcast. I think that me and uh, me and Ethan are going to be recording episode one uh, once I get off of here. 
And that should be going live on Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube everywhere pretty soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Christy just popped in. Hello, I'm a little late. I'm on CST, so I'll have to catch the replay. I hope you can catch the replay. Lots of, I feel like we've dropped a lot of knowledge. Knowledge. K-N-A-W, knowledge today. What's up, Josh? A little late, a little late, but uh, the replay will be there for you. Um, how does Carly like the new place? She's loving it. We're all loving it. It's a good place to be. Uh, we like it a lot. Definitely a lot better area. Before, we were just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. 20 minutes to get the closest to anything. And here, everything's right across the street. Uh, Fat Pandora, have a good rest of the day, too. Appreciate you being here. James, thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, Kiwi Bird, just want to say thanks for your time. And I'm happy, as I said in the beginning, glad I was able to catch your live day. I'm so happy you were able to be here. I appreciate all uh, 57 of you guys. I know people are starting to uh, uh, peel off since I said we're wrapping it up. We passed the hour mark. We are officially past the hour mark. So I guess the... That's it. I'll see you guys next week, every Tuesday at noon 30 Eastern time. Peace.